All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My brothers and sisters, I don't even know if I want to put this on YouTube or not. Maybe, maybe for controversy's sake, put it on YouTube. We'll probably do that. All right, let me concentrate a little bit because you know how people like coming around this hill. Huh? But um, got a video, <laughs> a comical and laughable video here this morning. You know, I'm thinking about putting a mirror here and there, man. That would make sense. You know what I mean? Clear tongue, man. There you go. Got a video for y'all this morning. Check it out. Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. <laughs> and you know I'm laughing about this. Nick Cannon. Most of y'all know who Nick Cannon is. Nick Cannon is, um, or used to be Mariah Carey's husband. Well, Nick Cannon has got a new philosophy. You know what their philosophy is? Spread his seed and have as many as children as he can. Now watch this. In the last past year, Nick Cannon has had four children by three different women. And who's griping? Who's complaining about it? Nobody. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? But as soon as you come over here and you start talking about polygyny, now, the world calls it polygamy because that's what y'all do out there in the world. But as soon as you start talking about polygyny, that's exactly what he's doing. And the first thing and the first person is always judged to be at fault is the man. Now, the last time I checked, it takes a man and a woman to be able to have a child. He just happened to have twins by one and then a, another one and another one making four children in one year. Man, he definitely spreading his seed, isn't he? Yes. Now, I, the reason why I'm on here is, see, because the world, they celebrate stuff like this. They celebrate stuff like this. And they don't have nothing to say. It's only when you start comparing what the world is doing with what the Bible says that people have issues, troubles, and problems. As a matter of fact, you'll watch people rewrite and recreate the book, the scriptures, all over again. Whenever you start talking about subjects like this, you'll they'll come up with these stupid, nonsensical arguments. Is it God's perfect will or this is it per, his permissive will? I, what the? <laughs> it's just simple. What is? I mean, we ain't gonna get in all that philosophy. Let's just deal with this at hand. Myself, brother Brett, and brother JC, they in here in the truck, and we getting ready to go out on the lake right here and do a couple of runs, but um. I just thought I'd make this video here this morning because I think it's comical and laughable. Now, in the world, they call them babies, daddies, mamas, and, and all of this old other phrases and stuff, right? And of course, some people are saying that he's being irresponsible, but nobody's condemning him for having all these children, though. Now, the book states, rejoice not in a bunch of unprofitable children. That's what the book said, but I know many of you, you don't care about what the book says. You care about your opinion. Now, for those of you who don't know, let me run it down for you. Because you know that the Christians and everybody else that's gotten their hands on the Hebrew scripts, the real Hebrew scriptures, that they twist, warp, distort, slammed. And I'll give you an example. The other day I ordered a book, uh, y'all that came in the mail, called uh, Christian Apologetics. Uh, and I go, oh, this ought to be interesting. You have Rive Zacharias, you know, a Jewish rabbi, Chuck Colson, and, and all these other people, all of them, these supposed to be the great minds of Christianity, right? So the first thing I do is I go in and, and I, I start, you know, I got a couple of hallmark acid test scriptures I go to to test to see where that mind is. You only need to do, all you got to do is find them in fault in one area and they're guilty of them all, you know what I mean? So the first thing I start, I start off with the Sabbath. Mind you, they have thought they got rabbis in there, right? But rabbis didn't even chime in on that. They try to relax the scriptures and relax the order of things by saying that you, whatever one day in seven you pick as a rest day. I said, boy, ain't that your ecumenical movement? And then that democracy in action right there, huh? Let's appease everybody conscious to, to be at ease and disobedience to the most high Yah. And mind you, I, I am not upset. Because if you if you choose to not obey the Bible, it's none of my business. It's your life. You got you better make sure you get it right. 
because pastor Dow's not going to answer for you. Your mama, your daddy, your meemaw, he haw, paw, paw, or whoever it is. Nobody's going to answer for you when it comes time for you to stand for the creator of the universe when he says, why didn't you obey me? And then, of course, me he goes, but I did love you. He going to say, didn't I tell you over in John 14, 15, that if you love me, you would keep my commandment? I did keep your commandment. No, you didn't. You did what you wanted to do. <laughs> so anyway, they flunked that one big time. <laughs> they don't even get an E for effort. <laughs> I mean, they, uh, I mean, dang. So I go to the next one. You know, I say, let me see how they go over here and do over on this Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. You know what I mean? Now, they did translate it right, the days on living bread, then the Passover. But you know what? They did not mention anything in their commentary about a condemnation for Easter. So, by the way, for those of you who don't know what apologetics means, that means these are people who are set for the defense of the message. That's what it means. It doesn't mean they're making an apology. <laughs> I mean, that's what I first thought. <laughs> I like apologetics. What you apologizing for? Makes sense to me. <laughs> it did. I said, wow. They flunked that one too. See, see what they're doing? You know, now the book has an acid test over in the book of Revelations. And the most I speaks to Yahshua and said that he would, that either when people were hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, he said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. So that's what you all are getting, lukewarmness. Because these people have learned today how to tell you what you want to hear rather than what you need to hear. And they're taking in account your sorry feelings and emotions which change with the weather. <laughs> it's just crazy. So they flunked that one. That was two for two so far. They don't flunk. So then I went over and checked to see what they had to say about polygyny. Polygamy. Polygyny. And boy, you know, they bombed that one. Man, did they bomb that one left and right. Oh, man. They said, oh, it wasn't God's perfect will. I said, perfect will? I said, now wait a minute. The king of glory, he was divinely interested in a patriarch's life. I mean, he was in it with Abraham. And wouldn't, don't we all agree that when he says in Psalms 89, I'm not going to alter or change anything which has gone out of my lips, that means he he's not like man that changes his mind. He, he, he doesn't lie. He doesn't do all that stuff like man does. What he means, what he says, and says what he means. Is that right? So what I've seen and what I've seen more than anything is that people whenever they have no argument, no sources for their argument, none whatsoever at all, uh, they'll come up with all these assertions and anytime you assert something, anytime you assert something and you advance it forward as if it is the gospel of truth, because you know ain't too many people saying, thus said the Lord, or the Lord says, no, they're saying, I say, but they ain't saying it, but I say, but I say, but I say, we say, nobody give a damn boy what I and we say. <laughs> I only care what the most I say is. <laughs> so anytime you advance something, you assert something right there, that means the burden of proof is on you. So that means you I, now you're in a category for me to question you. Yeah. Your ideology, your theology, your philosophy, your perspectives, or whatever angles you want to go, pick one. Makes no difference. Still one and the same. So then when you start catching people in their lies, I mean, after all, I mean, the Most High did set one tree in the midst of the garden. He did give Adam and Eve the run of the mill. The man, hey, it was a test tree. That's all it is. It was a test. See if he's going to obey him or not. You say you love him. Most of you drip honey and fruits off your lips. I mean, I remember Jesus saying, I know this is going to turn into a sermon. But hey, we're going to get to it though. Why call ye me Lord, Lord? And do not the things that I say. Ain't that what y'all Christian churches do every week? Y'all call, y'all love. Oh, we love you, Lord. And I live my voice to make a horrible sound of worship in you. <laughs> you damn liars. That's what y'all are. You're a bunch of damn hypocritical liars. And you hate this. But anyway, so Abraham had wives and concubines, the father of the faith. And he told one of them that decide because of the contention that was going on between Sarah and Hagar. <laughs> Listen to this. 
you know, Hagar decides she's going to kick the traces. The Most High Yah called her and would say, go back and submit. What? You mean go back into that tyrannical polygynous family? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said go back. <laughs> Whoa! 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 Now, if he was against it, would he tell him to go back? You people are nonsense. I mean, it's just crazy. But anyway, so then the next one is, next one is, well, ain't nothing but pro problems. That's what I read in the commentaries. There's nothing but trouble and problems in, in polygamy. I said, really? <laughs> I said, you can tell that these are people that they're talking to that they, they has no self-autonomy, probably don't even know what it means. They don't know how to exercise independent thinking and thought. So you're going to advance, you're going to assert that if somebody's in polygamy, they're always going to have problems. Well, damn, if we're going to go back to the beginning, I can show you what a problem is. There you go. Huh? <laughs> I mean, monogamy is not the champion of the ideal model of the way that the world should be because, damn, it is from monogamous relationship. It's from a monogamous union. The reason why we in the shit we in today. The first lie the first betrayal, the first murder, all came through a monogamous relationship of Adam and Eve. Oh yeah, you don't remember Cain and Abel? Didn't they come from monogamy? Didn't Cain slew Abel? Sure he did. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Then they're going to say, well, Lamech, Lamech was evil. But Lamech, okay, good. Lamech is, yeah, he was evil. But they didn't say that he was evil because he was in polygyny. That's your assertion. So that's you trying to reach. <laughs> that's you is trying to 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 get anything you can grasp at teeth. You're trying to deceive the simple-minded people who don't exercise independent thinking. And what's not preaching for y'all right now? Thank you, Dills. Besides that, Moses had three wives. David had a whole bunch of about eighteen all total. You know what I mean? The king of Israel. You know David, who some you believe is going to be the Messiah. And you all upset at him because he was getting him a bunch of nookie while he was here in the earth. Isn't that a damn shame? And so anyway, nobody is making a big deal about Nick Cannon going out here um, having all these. Now, in your world, this is what you would say. He's having a bunch of bastards. <laughs> That's what you would say. That, and you don't even know what the meaning of a bastard is. And boy, if Nick Cannon is having all these bastards, woo, hey, is somebody in trouble. I mean, these children are cursed to 10 generations. Mm. I think I'm dropping too much. What do y'all think? Oh, we're dropping now. This is too this much is, for YouTube. It's, it's too much for Christian. Right it's too much, man. Now you see the reason why nobody want to debate us, man? Now you don't have an open civil law dialogue debate. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to have that, but because these facts we dropping, yeah. coming from reliable sources, you know, laying it in. So anyway, I'm gonna keep going. Can you just drop that off? All you gotta do is put that on the counter in that post office right there. So anyway, this is what we had right here today. So Nick Cannon has got having a lot of children. He said he's gonna sow his seed. And a lot of people are blaming it on the fact that um, you know, his health is failing. Um, you know, things are going pretty bad for him or whatever it is. And so he's trying to have all the children that he can. That's what they're saying, right? Well, it makes no difference. I wanna know why aren't y'all out here? condemning these men that are out there spreading seed and then let's be fair and balanced that's what we all about right fair and balanced why aren't y'all out there jumping all over these women who know that this man is having children all over the place and nobody ever says anything to the woman nobody ever says anything these women know that this man got a lot of money and they know that this man is out there sowing his wild oats. And yet and still, they, they still allow him to raw dog right off into creating more babies. And I keep trying to tell y'all, there are some people, I, I hate to tell y'all this with y'all self-righteous self, but there are some people they really truly don't give a damn about the American system. Somebody said, wait, don't you know that they're going to come after him? The sound looks like to me, outside of the system, because ain't none of these women coming after him, looks like to me they got their own contract and agreement. They're not looking for no child support. He probably already supporting them because he can. So he's out here spreading his seed, making all these babies, and he's supporting them. 
So you gonna tell me polygyny ain't working? They probably have drew up their own verbal agreement and agreement in marriage. I mean, I, I say it again. Where is George Washington's marriage license? You know, one of the founding fathers of the country right here. Where's his marriage license? Where's Abraham Lincoln's marriage license? They didn't do it back then. Most of you don't even know the history of marriage license. The reason why marriage license came into play is because of misogyny. Yeah, you know, even though a seed produces out its own kind, many of you got some problems with so-called color of skin. And so the white man didn't want, to, want the white man, the white man didn't want the white woman marrying a black man. So they created misogynist law, but it was okay for them to go run down to the boom boom docks and make all kind of mulattoes. Thomas Jefferson, your champion of freedom and liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Boy, we got a lot going on in this thing. But anyway, but nobody is saying nothing about these women that are freely opening up their legs and allowing this man to run up in them raw dogging and, and putting his seed in there and having all these children. I mean, after all, the women are the ones who control the door to the matrix. They can either say yay or nay, but they're voluntarily doing this. Now watch this. Let's go ahead and tell the truth. The only reason why that this nation hates polygyny, not only have they played mental gymnastics with your mindset and deceived you, but the reason why that this nation hates polygyny is because they hate the power that will come from a people because of it. Strong family, strong values. You, you develop businesses and stuff and you end up having a lot of power. And then, you know, within 40 years, you could take over a whole county. One man teaches children. Let's say one man had 10 wives and then his children had 10 or 15 and they keep on having children, 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 children. And they could take over all the municipalities. They could take over the court system. They could take over the sheriff's department. Man, they could take over. Which way should I go? Oh, I'm going this way. I got to remember. Put that GPS in for me. It's been a while since I come up here. I don't, I don't even pay attention when I go. Um, so anyway, and that, I think I should have went that way, though. But anyway, nevertheless, we'll turn around. Oh, this is going to uh, Tompkinsville. Yes. Yeah, I need to go back no, that way. I've, no, I've never been back this way. Oh, you haven't? No. Go ahead and type in um, Dale Hollow. It makes no difference. But anyway, so anyway, this is hilarious. So... We, we have our own because the churches try to control our minds like the Catholic Church does. Try to control our minds and tell us what to believe and what not to believe, what to do and what not to do because it's going to take you 52. And, and all this old other stuff. That's what they do. All the time. That's what they try to do. Huh? Yeah, it's going to take us to 52. Well, are you trying to get to? Yeah. I'll go back that way then. No, that's going back, but it's just go that way too. Trust me, even though I don't know where the hell I'm going, I know where I'm going. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway, this is crazy. All right, so you think about this. All right, see Solana. Yep. All right. So anyway, so check this out right here. So um, what was the last thought I said before I got all mixed up? Anyway, that, that's what it is. Listen, there are people out here that are functioning outside of this government and don't give a damn because a lot of people got a lot of sense to not get saddled up with marriage license. You, you see what the family court, men see what family court does to them. So now they're drawing up their own independent private contracts. You know, people, hey, just because you was dumb and stupid and got raped by the court don't mean nobody else is. And besides this, I got another air. I'm going to throw it. I'm, can I throw this one at them? I'm going to throw it hard. Can I throw this out of Most of you are always talking about the rights of people. But when somebody out here is immoral and, and, and asserting their rights, you become mute. You don't say nothing. But whatever happened to two consenting adults getting together and agreeing on coming together and making a company, what business is it of yours anyway? Because, I mean, if they're any type of people at all, they're not going to allow you to have any influence in their lives anyway. And they don't give a damn about your opinion because your business don't mean nothing. You stay out of their business. They don't care nothing about your business. Does that make sense, C-52? They don't care nothing about your business. Your business don't mean nothing to them at all, period. And if you think 
that your opinion matters, he gonna go out and have some more children to show you that he don't give a damn about what you think. <laughs> How about that? That's called voting with your feet. That's what that is. That means the, the opinion of the court of public opinion means nothing. We don't need your validation. Y'all hearing this, right? So I know me, you don't care. So they will tell you, well, you go read over in Timothy, somebody try to say, also in that book, they try to say that uh, over in First Timothy chapter three, that the, the, uh, they, they read uh, the first part, then they read 312 and they says the second witness, I say these stupid people, that's still Paul writing the Timothy, there's only one witness. <laughs> and even at that, it's a letter. It's a letter, it's like me writing a letter to you. That's it. It's not scripture. It's not setting precedent or law. I'm like these nonsensical people. This is unreal. Oh, and by the way, Jesus, the real Jesus, you know, the one you, men you call savior of the world, he's born in Polygian's family. Sure was, boy, wait till I bring that one out. Man, and boy, I tell you, you know, uh, you, you know how the name Johnson is, is prevalent in this society, right? Uh, so was Peter. So was Jesus even in that day. And so all you confused about, I mean, you can easily get confused about his family tree because a lot of them had the same names. <laughs> oh, no. You know how many Marys there are? <laughs> Justin, Matthew alone? But the one thing that the writers of Matthew did is they always defined the Marys by their title, what they did, or who they come from. That's how you can find out what association was. Because there was three Marys at the impalement. When he was on the tree, you call it a cross because you're pagan. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep this honest. Bro. I really truly am trying to keep this honest, my brothers. I really truly am, okay? So anyway, Nick Cannon is out here sowing his seed. And now people are talking about it because they ain't got nothing else to do in their life. They can't be happy unless they're appearing into other people's lives and trying to lie and influence somebody else. How many of you out there have been in polygamy? with your serial divorce legally, remarried, divorce, remarriage, divorce, remarried, and you don't think that's polygamy either? Just because it's on the cardinal-minded books of the heathen? No, you still are, you're still in polygamy. And guess what? The state is letting you know because they're making you responsible for every child that comes from you. You people better wake up, man. Ain't nobody playing this religious stuff. Monogamy comes from uh, comes from the the West. It's a Western mindset. It's not an Eastern culture mindset. That's why, you know, in order for the West to make themselves feel better, they got to condemn what the Bible says. And uh, believe me, they. Yeah, it's amazing what they have done to the people today. They have given you a Bible and showing that most of you don't read it. I see people carrying Bibles to church all the time. I love point to the brother and say, look at him. He got a Bible in his hand, but he don't know a damn thing is in it. Look at him. That's just like me. I could carry a dictionary in church and they still think I got a Bible in my hand. They wouldn't know the damn difference, man. They wouldn't know the difference, man. He don't know what's in that book. Oh, dummy. <laughs> anyway, but they got this Bible and they tell you what it says. And then you choose to believe what your preacher tell you rather than you studying and showing yourself approved. Rather than you being like a Berean and searching out these matters to see if these things are so. You're more comfortable because, you know, after all, if you did decide to be a man like these two men right here and stand on your own two feet, use your own mind, read the Bible, and then obey what it says, you're probably in a position that we are. You know what that position is today? All of us are married without a marriage license. And uh, we're getting ready to go to Dell Hall and go, go up here and run this boat up and down there, have a little bit of, you know, practice on it and get used to it and stuff because it's a pretty complex boat back there. And I mean, I mean, after all, yeah, it's a bad life, isn't it? That's a bad <laughs> life, man. And this is on a Friday morning, too. It's a bad life, man. It's bad, isn't it? It's a bad life, man. Didn't have bad brothers like this? Yeah, shoot, man. Oh, and by the way, we got three guns in here, too. God, I forgot to tell y'all that. But anyway, but uh, I mean, let's just get real though. In case y'all hadn't figured it out, religious people, I myself for one, I don't give a damn 
about your opinion concerning what I do in my life. I got an answer for it. You ain't got an answer for it. But if you're really truly so interested in my life and stuff, and since you don't know nothing, get your know nothing preacher. We'll pay for our own way. I'll come up and shame him in front of all y'all and show you what the real Bible says. By the time you get finished opening it up, then you know what? Many of you are going to decide to follow the Antichrist. You go freely serve the devil after I get finished telling you what y'all says because you ain't going to like what he got to say at all. And by the way, over in Ezekiel 23, Yahweh himself is a polygynist. He said he had two of them. <laughs> and that's something. Boy, you're in trouble. I'm telling you. So leave Nick Cannon alone. He ain't bother nobody. And, and by the way, what law is he breaking? I mean, after all, there ain't no laws on the land. Look, we live in a country that you can go out and get your marriage license. Y'all ready for this one? Yes. And you can be married according to their license. Man and woman, you go sign a contract, third party contractual agreement with the government. All right? And then every child that you have is theirs. That's what you agree to. Because they didn't disclose you the hidden terms of the contract. Just because they didn't disclose you, ignorance is no excuse for the law. But then, your wife can go out here and commit adultery with another man and the system will protect her. And you better not say a damn thing. That's, that's your system of justice. That's your law. Ain't I right? Hmm? And y'all in that confusion matter out here? Huh? And so you, well, any man has more than one woman. Well, I'm going to go a little bit farther. You want me to go a little bit farther? Yeah, How many of your men, while they married to you, you caught them looking at other women, lusting after them with their eyes, gazing on other. You know, the Bible says if you look on a woman to lust, <laughs> I'm calling your theology now. I'm giving you your word. If you look on a woman to lust, you've already committed adultery. So how much adultery is being done today? <laughs> it ain't nobody suffering the penalties of the law right now. Y'all better stop it. You better stop with this foolishness. Y'all better stop with this foolishness. Oh, you, 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 your wives out there. It's supposed to be a covenant with you. And 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 she over there looking at Flavio. Oh boy. <laughs> and he looking good and, and and she's trying to play it off like she ain't really looking, so she puts her sunglasses on. Oh boy. <laughs> Get a real good look. And you wonder why her head turned towards that direction. You think she's looking at the mockingbird that's in the tree. She's looking at Flavio. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm making a mock out of all this because it's foolishness. It's nonsensical. I can understand. When you was a child, you spake as a child. You understood as a child. When you become a man, you're supposed to be able to put away childish things. You're supposed to grow the hell up. And most of you can't stand on the truth because your wife will leave you. They're letting you know that you ain't got a wife. You can't stand on the truth because you know your family would divorce you from them. Thereby letting you know you ain't got a family. So I'm going to tell you right now, Nick Cannon don't give a damn what the world says. As a matter of fact, without saying a word, he's really sticking his middle finger up to y'all and telling y'all to go to hell. And he go out and still have more children. And there's some good looking women too. Ain't none of them. Ain't none of them women bigger than men. None of them. Ain't none of them women ugly. All of them are eights. They are eight and above. Most of you, you can't even go out there and buy somebody else's hair, put some Botox on, and put some fake breasts and ass in you and still become an eight. You still, you can't even do that with all the modifying. I told you. Beauty is only skin deep, but ugly is to the bone. There ain't no modifications you can do to make yourself look good when you are ugly. Somebody got to be ugly. Somebody tell me I'm ugly, I'll take it. Somebody got to bring the balance in nature. <laughs> Why get offended, man? Beauty's in the eye to be older, right? Hey! Anyway. Y'all got to understand your opinion ain't valid. And people still going to do what they're going to do regardless of what you say. But then when you turn around, hey, here's the last thing. I'm going to end it on this. For all you people out there that say you know the Bible, you can end my opinion and my discussion right here easily like this. All you got to do is pick up that Bible and show me the law. Just one law that condemns polygyny or a man having more than one wife. Just show me one law and I will stop preaching. I will never 
get in another pulpit or stand up before people. I will stop laying my hands on people for healing. I will not do no more trips. I will stop doing communities. I won't do nothing else. I will keep my mouth shut the rest of the days of my life. Now you put some teeth in the game. Suppose you get in there, you can't show me the law. What you gonna put on the table? Put some on the table. I mean, I put. I just got finished putting a lot on the table. I put a hell of a lot on the table right now. Now you bring some equal or, or, or even make it greater in value. Put some on the table. Put it on. All your preachers, your lying, sorry preachers. Your lying family members, put it on the table. Show me one law that condemns polygyny. That condemns the Bible. You, you cannot do it. That's the reason why I'm saying that. Now, it's either put up or shut up. Which one is it? So, Lee, I'm going to start a new campaign. Leave Nick Cannon alone. Leave Nick Cannon alone. Leave Nick Cannon alone. Canon lies matter. Canon lies matter. Canon lies matter. <laughs> a real man, man, you give him a little time, he get established and stuff, man. He, he he wants to be able to put his seed out there and profitable children and stuff so he can have a legacy. Then teach these children out to him and stuff to keep on going and, and to keep his vein, keep his legacy going. And hey, don't give me that shit. Well, I passed it out. What, what, what about you? What about me? I can have all the women I want and do. How about that? Now, show me the, the court of heaven that's going to condemn me. Because you know what? If I'm going to hell for having more than one Isaiah, then I guess I'm going to be joining Abraham, Jacob, yeah. Moses, David, <laughs> Elkina. I mean, I got a great cloud of witnesses. <laughs> If we follow your philosophy, yeah, I mock you. I sure do. Nonsensical. Anyway, it's just so sad. It's just so sorry. Brothers, what do y'all think about that? You know, a lot of people gonna get upset, especially some Jezebels. Hey, Jezebel, don't get upset. I understand the reason why you got somebody else's hair in your head. The book said instead of well said hair baldness. And now you you grasping at straws just even trying to get somebody else's hair to even connect to your head. <laughs> oh, so shut up. Man, everybody out there that really truly understand my vein and my heart, they know what 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 they know what they know what lane I'm coming in. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I mean, Galatians 4.16 said, Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Let me tell you something. I have not lied to y'all one time in this video. Yes, I made it comical at times. We had a lot of digressions in this thing. We had 33 minutes long, but I've not lied to you one time. Not once. I am not. I've told the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth because John 8 32 says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and if you accept this truth you're going to get ready to get free many of you many of you are sitting out there condemned thinking you don't commit fornication and you ain't commit fornication at all many of you out there thinking that you done had bastard children look at that damn Roman Catholic religion out there look what it's undone to your minds huh walking around in a in, in a slew of condemnation not even knowing what the scriptures say not even knowing what the scriptures say hmm well you know, like I said hey somebody said the other day they said it and if anybody think that I'm wrong I'll debate anybody and then I called them up and well I actually made a video and told them I'm, I'll debate you and then they got offended I'm telling you right now I'll debate anybody in the world on this subject in the world on this subject. I don't care who you are, but let me tell you something. I do want to put this stipulation. 
Don't be somebody that know two scriptures and got a YouTube channel and you got three subscribers, man. You think I'm going to spend all my time, energy, effort, and resources and, and come and debate you. At least be a pastor or a theologian or somebody that has the seal of your pastorship. Show a following. Show somebody following you. you know, show a little credentials. Have that kind of honor and respect. I'm doing that for you. But if not, Y'all know a cheetah, a cheetah's supposed to be the fastest animal on the earth, right? That's why all your pastors are, they cheetahs. <laughs> they running like hell on this subject right here. They gonna tuck tail and run, boy. They ain't gonna dare touch pastor down on this one. Uh-uh, uh-uh, and uh-uh. You ain't getting me caught up in that one. You know the reason why they want to be? It's, it's a whole lot better for them to be insulated and them little confined walls and, and that confinement of, of the congregation where y'all at and then them a certain opinion than to actually vigorously discuss and debate your cause right I'm telling you so anyway hope y'all have a wonderful wonderful day I'm sorry that I messed up y'all y'all wicked end I mean weekend sorry I messed it up free Nick Cannon <laughs> start a campaign free Nick Cannon <laughs> Shalom. <laughs>